And so most coaches, I don't think, would make the move that, uh, that, that I decided to make. And it was after our, our regular season, after we, we got our bid to the national tournament, where we installed the blocker mover offense. Uh, and so it took us, it took us literally uh, five practices to where I felt that we could run it in a game, be efficient with it. It wasn't going to be perfect because obviously we've not run it in games. We've not had that opportunity to, to take game film uh, and game experience, teach it, and learn from it and grow. Uh, but we were able to we were able to put it in again in a week and 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 get that thing again to where you'll see where we uh, um, we we were able to to run it kind of effectively. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of computer glitch here. Uh, but anyways, enough of that. I'm going to get right to it. So number one question I always get is where do you start? Where do you start in practice uh, putting this offense in? And so I'm going to try to share my screen with you and get right to it here. And as I'm going through it, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead. Feel free to type in the chat. and Or if you want to get them at the end, I'm okay with that. So uh, the first place that we're always going to start uh, in this offense is our get open drill. And so what I, what I do is initially I will walk through and show them the whole offense first so they have a little bit idea of it. Uh, and then we'll come back and, and we will spend a lot of time on this get open drill. And we'll start it with four on none then we'll go to four on two, and then later you could progress to four on four if you'd like. So initially we would have these two defenders off the floor. And the, it's a timing, timing aspect. And so again, what I'm doing right now is I'm assuming you guys know some blocker mover stuff. So I'm not even going to go through uh, the roles and all that stuff. So if, if you have any questions on that, we, we definitely can come back at that at the end. We do play it three out, two in. We can play some four out, one in uh, as well. Uh, but this year, even with our four guards, we made one of our guards one of our screeners, which you'll see on film. And it's a very effective way to take advantage of uh, maybe some mismatches or to get him in space because they have to help in certain situations. But anyways, we'll start with our floppy pin down screens and our offensive man in the middle. We're going to let him break off of either side, four or five. We really don't care in this drill. Uh, what we're going to teach them is we don't want them to do the same thing, you know, and become robotic with it. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So if two uh, uses a V cut, which is almost a lost art in today's game, uh, he comes off this pin down on number four. Uh, the point's going to hit him with that pass. And then we go into the action that we call dribble top. So two is going to automatically dribble top. And in this drill, we're going to have one come right off of five screen and curl right underneath the rim. And so our pin down screen, uh, as our blockers have been taught, if you are setting the pin down screen, then your partner more than likely is going to be setting a flare screen. So that's kind of our action in this. Uh, so if we have one on the baseline, we're always looking to flare screen away from entry. So two is dribble topped, one is underneath the rim. And for then for drill purposes, we just have two dribble it out nice and easy, get it set back up, one's underneath the basket, four and five set back up, and then they go back to their pin down screen. One's gonna break off of either side, two's gonna hit him, and then one would dribble top, two would come off this curl screen, get underneath the rim, 
and then one would back it back out and they're back to where they started. So now what we're, we're stressing in this drill is uh, obviously working on our, our pin down screens. Uh, we're gonna tell our fours and fives, our, our screeners that, you know, obviously we don't want them moving. We don't want them throwing their hips. It's not their job to, to make contact with uh the offensive man's defender if he can't run his man off then we need to get a new new perimeter player in for him like so uh it's his job to use you not your job to you know to to, to move and get that guy open he's got to use you so we're, we're going to start with this get open drill again four on none and then you can advance it to four on two which is a nice nice progression to it so again, now what we're working on, and it, when you go four on two, we're going to dictate initially how that defender has to play. So that's part of all these drills, dictating how the defender has to play. Uh, so in this case here, when we add a defender, we're going to have him lock and trail, or we'll call it shirt tail. So we want him right on his, his rear end, chasing him off this screen which is gonna obviously make sure that he's open at the wing, but some teams are gonna defend that way rather than go over the top. After we've played it where he's locked and trailed a number of times, then we'll have him go over the top. So it really, it, it, it's a good passing drill for these guys as well. Uh, learning how to hit that man as he's getting open, passing to the outside hand. And it's again, a great drill for these guys working on getting open I, I you know it, it's amazing how players get to us and and shit they they do not know how to get open uh and, I, and again my it's my personal belief it's it's so many of them are just used to playing dribble drive stand around watch a guy shake and bake penetrate throw up some nonsense shot or maybe pass it out we're not sure but uh, so I, I think we're really lacking in the fundamentals of this.